Hey, how's it going guys? It's Chad here from Lootoons, and welcome to the third annual Disney Month! <sighs> guys, I am so excited for this year's Disney Month. We've got so many cool videos planned. We got two countdowns coming down the pipes. We got a drawing video, and we got a Toon Bite where I'm going to go very in-depth about one of my favorite underrated Disney movies and even a couple of other just uh, random videos in between. So I am very excited. But today we're gonna kick it off with a Disney Q&A, which is a video that you guys wanted to see. I gave you a few options over on my Facebook page over there, which you should go check out if you wanna be a part of future votes like this. So I asked what video you guys wanted to see and you guys voted on a Disney Q&A. I posted a video, I kept it live for about, I don't know, eight hours and we got thousands of Disney related questions. So I'm gonna pour through these and uh, hit you guys with some answers. Alright, our first question comes from Pippi Dog, who wants to know, which animation style do I like better, hand-drawn or CGI? Now, I think that most people kind of tend to agree that they like hand-drawn more, um, and I'm in that camp as well. It's just got a lot more life and appeal to it. I hope it makes a return to the big screen, but at this point, I just don't know that it will, due to its financial downfalls. The next question comes from Made by Soul. I heard Disney completely took down their 2D animation studio. Is Princess and the Frog the last 2D movie we will ever see from Disney? This goes along with that last question. It's hard to say that this is the last one we'll ever see, but it's kind of feeling that way right now. Um, you know, as long as these Minions movies keep uh, just crushing it at the box office, what's the appeal to make Princess and the Frog-esque movies? Especially when you've got um, Films like Frozen and Tangled proving that you can do a classic Disney fairy tale musical in a 3D format. This question comes from Morgan Snails. I wonder if that's your real name or, well, it probably isn't. <laughs> hey Chad, I love your videos. You're my favorite cartoon related channel and I've been sub for almost two years. Oh man, Morgan, thank you for sticking around for two years. That is a very long time. I really appreciate it. Um, your question is how many Disney animated feature films do I have on VHS? Do I have them all? Um, can't wait for Disney Month. Welcome to Disney Month. You're here. You don't have to wait anymore. It's already here. Um, how many Disney... Let's see. They're right, right over there. I don't have them all. I certainly don't. I think I have like 20 or so. Um, and I haven't bought any recently. So I'm not like a collector. I just have them from being a kid. So I still have like random ones that I don't like as much. Like Aristocats and stuff. But, you know, I have quite a few. Uh, maybe I'll do a collection video sometime, but you'll probably won't be that impressed because I don't have that many. <laughs> Daniela Castillo wants to know, is Ratatouille actually a real dish or something they made up in the movie? I always thought it was, but then one time I was at a restaurant, I saw it on the menu, and then beyond that I actually saw someone get it, and I kind of was like, that guy just wanted to find out what it actually tastes like, and I'm kind of curious too. But, um, it is real. This question comes from Catalin Dimitrescu. Oh, I'm so sorry. I should also apologize uh, beforehand to anyone's names who I ruin. Trying my best to move at a reasonable clip through these questions. Do I think that Disney will add an out gay character in a movie in the near future? Um, the guy from Frozen doesn't really count. I'm not sure what Frozen character you're talking about there, but um, I feel like it's kind of inevitable that that will happen at some point. I don't know about the near future. I've noticed kind of a thing happening that's popping up in tons of movies and shows that I'm seeing recently where they put a gay character in but them being gay has nothing to do with um, their character. They're just like, hey I'm a pizza delivery guy but I also like dudes. But that has nothing to do with me delivering pizzas. So maybe they'll do something like that instead of having the storyline, you know, centralizing around their sexual preference. So it could happen. I just don't know if Disney is going to be pulling the trigger on that anytime soon. Man, what a bad answer but that's what you got, Catalin. 
Storm Wolf wants to know, do I actually have a working VCR that can play all of those Disney VHS tapes? And yes, I absolutely do. I actually had two, but one of them broke because I got the Aladdin VHS tape from my knockoff Aladdin review stuck inside of it, so it can like never be used again. But I do have one VCR left, so uh, that'll be the one I use from here on out. So here it is. It's insanely heavy and clunky, but uh, it plays VHS tapes very well, and that's all I can ask. Unlike my other one, that destroyed my Aladdin VHS tape. Not that I want to watch it again. <laughs> Our next question comes from Jor-El McLaughlin. Who's my favorite and least favorite Disney princess? Looks like somebody hasn't watched my Disney princesses list. It's right there, you can see my top 10 favorite Disney princesses. As for my least favorite, I have to agree with you and say Snow White. Nothing against her really, but she's just not terribly interesting, I'm afraid. Next we have Clara Tan, Clara Tan, however you use. Have I watched any Disney musicals? Um, I've seen a pretty decent amount of Disney musicals. I saw Beauty and the Beast, I saw Little Mermaid on Broadway, I saw Lion King. Uh, those are the three I've seen. Luis Villasenor wants to know, say I got the name right, first try. My first Disney crush, and there's 31 thumbs up on this one, man. Um, that would definitely have to be Belle, with Ariel as a close second. Um, Joe Fridays with Simba from The Lion King. <laughs> Disney Tumblr guy asks, do I believe in any Disney theories? Unfortunately, uh, you guys probably be disappointed in this answer, but unfortunately not really. I find that a lot of things that people use in the Disney theories are really just more easter eggs for the animators than anything else. They're not meant to reference some kind of a shared universe. Although I do know how much fun that stuff can be to speculate over, um, I just don't personally subscribe really to any of those theories, and I find them to be more fun easter eggs from the animators. Casey Soper wants me to pick six Disney characters from six different Disney movies to create my Disney superhero team. Oh boy, this is going to be a task, but uh, I've got my uh, little notepad open here. I'm going to take a five minute break, drum this thing up, and then I'll tell you guys who I picked. <laughs> okay, so here's what I came up with. Uh, by the way, this is a great question, very fun. You guys should do this in the comments, pick what your team would be. Um, so I went for a team that I think would be uh, both a strong team in terms of like fighting, if it's going to be a superhero team, as well as a dynamic, you know, fun and interesting team that can work together in interesting ways. So first I've got Buzz Lightyear, not the toy Buzz Lightyear, but like Buzz Lightyear Star Command, like the real guy who's in that universe. Um, because come on, Buzz Lightyear, he's like the leader. He kind of leads the gang to victory. My next choice is Tadashi Hamada. I was thinking about saying Hero. This is like your resident gadget guy, but Tadashi's just way better and he would be really fun to have on the team. We've got the Beast from Beauty and the Beast, of course. In this superhero team scenario, though, he can go from human to beast at will. So he's kind of this, like, very kind prince, but, like, when he gets super mad, he can kind of hulk out into beast mode, except he's still got his full, you know, personality when he's, when he's the beast. But he can still, like, tear people apart and go crazy and stuff. We've got Shan Yu from Mulan. This is gonna seem super random, but I, I wanted to get one villain in there, and I was thinking he would be great because he's so, like, quiet and just dark. So he's gonna kind of be the the dark side of the team. They're gonna kind of have to corral him a little bit to uh, get him to work with, with everybody else. But you know, he's, he's got some sword skills, he's got some leadership skills, so he's gonna be kind of the resident badass. My fifth pick is Elsa because uh, we all saw what she did to those two poor guys that came in and tried to capture her. Um, the ice powers are just uh, over the top, overpowered. And uh, with her on the team, uh, they're going to be just fine. She can protect them with ice and giant snow monsters, what have you. And the last, my sixth member is Bolt, the dog. So he's kind of the team dog. How cool is that? And by the way, not um, Bolt, the like actor dog who plays Bolt, but just like Buzz Lightyear, like the universe, like the show that he's on, that Bolt. So he has like real powers and stuff. So that's my superhero team of six. It's kind of like five people and a dog. But uh, yeah, that was super fun to make. And yes, there's actually no Incredibles characters in there. Cad Lagonthier wants to know, who is my favorite animal side character in Disney? Man, that is a good question. 
my initial thought would be was gonna be uh, more from Treasure Planet, but since he's not really um, an animal per se, I'm gonna go with either Maximus from Tangled. He's got that hilarious, which I think is such a brilliant scene, chasing the bag uh, with Flynn Rider, or I would go with Miko because can't go wrong with Miko. What movie do I think has the best musical score? You love the music in Anastasia. Um, I hate to be that guy, but you guys know what I'm gonna say. I think the best musical score has to be The Hunchback of Notre Dame. That's just my opinion. I just love how it's got like this main one theme and it kind of sprinkles it throughout the whole movie. It just has this larger than life kind of like Latin cathedral feel to it. I mean, any of the Alan Menken ones really, I think are probably at the top. But uh, yeah, I would go with Hunchback. What's my favorite Disney character that's not a human? Well, this is kind of a cop-out answer, but I'm gonna go with the one and only Robin Hood. S1R Dragon wants to know, where is DreamWorks Month that I've been asking for? Uh, you know, there's not gonna be a DreamWorks Month. You guys know I'm a huge How to Train Your Dragon fanboy, but um, at the end of the day, there's just not enough DreamWorks stuff to really warrant a full month, and there's not a big enough pool of things yet. And also, Disney just has a certain culture to it that I think is more conducive to something like this. So there probably won't ever be a DreamWorks month, but uh, I hope that you still enjoy Disney month, because we're just getting started, guys. Woo! What are my thoughts on the live-action Disney movies? You know what? I haven't seen Maleficent yet. I didn't see Cinderella. Um, what other ones have there been? I, I don't know, I guess I'm not too interested in them. Uh, people seem to like them a lot, I guess, so that's good. I definitely want to see Maleficent at some point, and I think that the new Beauty and the Beast with Emma Watson, and like Luke Evans as Gaston, and uh, Josh Gad as LeFou, and Ian McKellen as Cogsworth looks awesome. So I'm really excited for that one. Uh, other than that, I can't really say that I've really gotten too much into them, um, but I can say that I'm a big fan of Enchanted, if you want to count that. Siba, Siba, Saib, we love to rumple wants to know if I could couple any Disney princess with any Disney prince to get my two favorite characters as a couple, who would I choose and why? P.S. I love your videos. Thank you, Siba, Sib, Saib, oh, I'm sorry. So I think I'm gonna go with Prince Edward from Enchanted and Princess Anna from Frozen. I think there would just be like a really funny goofball vibe between those two. And I think they would really get along and probably laugh a lot. And that's the kind of relationship that I think would be really fun. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to pick. I don't know, let me know what you guys think about that pairing. It's kind of strange, I suppose. Okay, we've got a very long question here from Cool74. Sounds like a radio station. Your opinion on what many people call the dark age of Disney, the period in the 80s right before The Little Mermaid and the Renaissance. Some people say it begun with the Aristocats right after Walt Disney died. What do I think of films in that period? How good or bad were they? Are they a bit underappreciated? I hope you have time to answer my question. That period of Disney actually does strike a very weird part of my Disney interest because there is a weird time there when I just happen to not be a big fan of those Disney movies. Aristocats is probably my very least favorite Disney thing ever. <laughs> that period of Disney movies is of a lot less interest to me, but there is a Disney movie or two or three or five in that period that I really love, but there's also a Disney movie or three or five in that time period that I just don't really care for. Um, so it definitely is the period of time for me that has probably the most Disney movies like per capita that I don't like, but I don't know, it's just a really weird time. So I think your question is very interesting because it's just a strange period for Disney. Period. <laughs> Andreas Dimitriades wants to know, again, sorry about the name. Disney has been around for a very long time. When do I think they're going to stop producing movies? I think there's a pretty simple, uh, you know, rule with film companies. It's as long as they're still making money, they're still going to make stuff. And uh, Disney is just kind of eating up everything else. And I think they're going stronger than they ever have been going right now. So if things continue like they have been, I don't see them stopping for anything short of, you know, a meteor set to destroy Earth. Aaron the Eevee says, 
I've been waiting for a Q&A to respond to, but now you can't think of a question. Well, what question do you want me to ask? I, I don't know, Aaron the Eevee, but I like your, uh, your little icon there. Eevee is very cool. Um, maybe ask what my favorite Eeveelution is. That would be a good one. You'll, you'll catch me next time. Sweetie Pie 13 wants to know, why don't I like the Princess and the Frog? Um, people actually ask me this quite a bit, and it's not that I like hate it or anything, but when it comes to like the classic 2D Disney movies, I have such like a special place in my heart, but I just didn't have that with, with that movie in particular. A lot of that probably comes from the fact that I'm just not a big fan of Randy Newman and his music, really. I mean, You Got a Friend in Me is good, and uh, I like the Dr. Facilier song, but other than that, the music in that movie just totally like, didn't work for me, I did not really care for it. Um, so the songs I didn't really enjoy, and it just didn't really enter the upper echelons of Disney movies like I was hoping that it would. My favorite song from one of the classic Disney movies. That's a pretty easy question for me, I suppose I can give you guys a bit of a spoiler, but uh, Robin Hood is one of my favorite movies, Disney movies of all time. Um, and uh, I love the Robin Hood Little John song, the main one. They've actually been using it a ton in this new like Google ad. But uh, my favorite song for that movie is called Not in Nottingham. Super sad, like it's at a really low point in the movie, a really great sad point in that movie. Um, and it's really cool. They have this rooster and he's like a bard and he plays all the songs on like a lute. It's great. Not in Nottingham, very good. I wouldn't watch it just independently, I'd watch it as part of the movie, but you're gonna hear me talk a lot about Robin Hood in the coming days. Arnaldo Mendoza wants to know, what are my opinions on Wreck-It Ralph? You guys probably know, I talk about it all the time. I'm absolutely in love with Wreck-It Ralph. It's one of my very favorite Disney movies that's come out um, like this decade. And um, yeah, I'm a huge fan. K-A-N-D-Y-X-X-D wants to know, uh, what's my favorite romantic moment in any Disney movie? This is probably a pretty popular answer, but I'd have to say um, I See the Light, the duet with Rapunzel and Flynn Rider in the uh, little boat out on the water with all the lanterns. Uh, you, just come on, guys, come on. I, I, I really just can't think of one to top it, to be honest. Uh, Kayla Abbott wants to know, how many horrible knockoff Disney movies are there? Um, now this is in reference to my knockoff Aladdin review, which is super fun to make. Well, got, it was fun to make, and uh, you guys should check that out if you haven't. It's this wacky Aladdin knockoff movie. And um, you know what? I don't know a whole lot of other knockoffs. I know this company has some good times, so I'm trying to dig them up because I want to do more knockoff reviews. But uh, for the time being, I don't know a whole lot of them. So if you guys know good knockoff Disney movies or knockoff whatever that are just fun, I would love to do more reviews um, of more knockoffs. How many times can I say knockoff? Jason Fleming wants to know, why is Disney's Hercules story more different from the original Greek mythology. I think all the Disney movies that are based off of old fairy tales or older stories are heavily changed um, to turn them into family friendly ideas and movies and um, just stories that can be consumed in an hour and a half instead of long novels. So I think most of them are pretty drastically changed, Hercules included. Chi Habu Alchemist wants to know, what's your favorite scene in Tangled? Honestly, I think my favorite scene is just the very first scene uh, when she's singing When Will My Life Begin and kind of just cool montage of all of the things that she does with all the free time that she has, just chess and painting and baking and all that good stuff. I think that is a awesome scene, the song and just like the fun idea that you get about Rapunzel before the movie's even begun is very good. Uh, close seconds would be like the fun satchel chase with, uh, with Flynn and Maximus and uh, and the initial Mother Knows Best number is also like very fun and has those fun sort of otherworldly friend like me aspects to it, which I really like. So yeah. Ginger Ty Perrier wants to know what my what's my favorite Disney park? Um, I've only ever been to Disney World. Um, that was a long, long time ago when I was a kid, but I would love to go back to Disney World or Disneyland or any other Disney parks that are not in America would be insanely cool to go to. Lyra Corwin wants to know, what is the best Disney sequel and why? Now that's a very interesting question, but at the moment I can't answer it. There might be some kind of an annotation here at some point later on. 
Or maybe it's there now. Coin Otaku wants to know, have I ever heard of the canceled Disney movie, Newt? I haven't, but I'm surely going to Google it now. Thank you for, uh, for the tip. Miss Bunny Swan wants to know, what do I think about the upcoming Tangled television series? Um, I'm not too excited. I think Tangled is a really fun, well-contained story. But um, I really enjoyed the art style that it's going to be in, so I'll definitely be checking it out. And excited that uh, Zach Levi and Mandy Moore are going to return. Huge, huge fans of uh, the performances that they, that they put down um, in that movie. I think some of my favorites, for sure. Amber61Pop wants to know if I've ever seen Meet the Robinsons and what my thoughts are on it. I have seen Meet the Robinsons and I really, really love it. Um, it's, of course, I think it's kind of universally agreed upon that it's one of the most underrated Disney movies of all time. But the reality is, that was a Disney movie that I didn't see when it came out. And it's not like it came out that long ago. So there was something about that movie that just seemed off. Um, through like its advertising campaign and I think that's why I kind of got lost in the shuffle a little bit But I did see it later on and it is really cool and interesting. It's just very very involved I'm sure I'll be talking more about meet the Robinsons At some point it'll happen Spike sketches wants to know if I worked for Disney. What would I do? Um, well, you guys know that I do some animating and I try my best but at the end of the day, my just sort of innate drawing skills are not really that great. And of course, you can always practice and practice and practice and uh, try to get, you know, as good as you can at drawing. But at the end of the day, I think I would like to maybe be a writer. Something that I've really been dreaming about doing recently is being a writer on a show, like more of like a animated TV show. But I'd love to be um, involved in the writing process for a film as well. So maybe something like that would be pretty cool. Juliet Greenway wants to know my favorite live-action Disney movie character. I gotta say, I still don't know a whole lot of live-action Disney movies. Because there's a lot that are Disney, but you just can't really think of them. I'm gonna say, like, how about uh, Denzel Washington from Remember the Titans? <laughs> that was Disney, right? He was pretty cool. Aaron Levison wants to know, what do I like better, Brave or Frozen? I'm sure for those of you guys that watch every single one of my videos, this is an easy answer for you. But um, of course the answer is Frozen here. Not a big fan of Brave. Just wasn't for me. Too many bears running around. <laughs> Cam Manette wants to know what I thought of Inside Out. And I really loved it. I think a lot of it had to do with a giant lack of faith I had in the movie. The trailers just... It didn't look very good to me. Something about it, I said a hunch it wouldn't be good, but I wouldn't put it in like my top, top tier of Pixar movies, but it's definitely up there, and it's always great to go into a movie that you're not expecting to like and end up really, really liking it. Prankster Call Lock wants to know, my thoughts on Toy Story 4. <sighs> Man, this is, it's, it's a tough one to swallow, you know? It's like, I really thought Toy Story 3 was like a masterpiece in terms of tying up a trilogy. Like it was fantastic in the way that it kind of bookended the Toy Story story. So for me, it's kind of like, okay, I guess we're like digging this back up. It's gonna happen, so we just kind of have to cross our fingers and hope that it's good. It's really all that we can hope for. It's all we all can hope for. <laughs> Zanuk ASF wants to know, how come Disney is so against tall princesses? Because the average height to be one is 5'5". Five five. I find that to be very tallest. Tall racism. Uh, I don't have an answer for you, but at least you, you've got Honey Lemon for Big Hero 6. She's not a princess, but she's a strong Disney female character, and she's pretty cool and tall and lanky, and... It's a step in the right direction. David Morales has an interesting question. Why is the movie Aladdin called Aladdin if Jasmine is the main character? Okay, so this got me thinking. Jasmine is... is, is Jasmine the main character? Okay, okay, okay. Let's follow her trajectory, right? So she's living this princess life. She's not very satisfied with it. She's not getting to adventure as much as she would want. Go out into the world, live her life, try new things. Tries to go out, be a commoner, gets instantly 
busted, basically. Aladdin kind of helps her out. And that's all a very good beginning to a Jasmine story, but I think from there, Aladdin's story definitely takes over as the main thing, because from then on, Jasmine's main role is just to kind of, like, get captured by Jafar and be inside of an hourglass a little bit, and kind of just to be, like, wooed by Aladdin. And while I do appreciate her, um, you know, resistance to being, you know, just a prize, at the end of the day, I don't think the story was about her. Um, I'm sure maybe some of you guys will disagree. I didn't know that this was the thing. The Jasmine analog in the knockoff Aladdin was completely terrible. If you guys uh, have the chance or the misfortune of seeing it, uh, it's very funny. Her character is awful, so I at least appreciate that Jasmine was a much more interesting character um, in Disney's Aladdin. Ronaldo Fryman, the Sneeple Hunter. Uh, <laughs> well, Steven Universe there, huh? If Disney makes another full Frozen movie, what do I think the plot could be? You know, Frozen did set itself up very nicely to um, have a sequel because of Elsa's kind of, you know, you don't really know what's going to happen with Elsa moving forward. You don't know what it's going to be like, what's going to happen with her powers. So I would think that it will have something to do with, you know, a connected village. We've seen there's a lot of kind of diplomacy and politics that happen between the villages. Um, with the whole like Duke of Wesselton thing. So I'm thinking there's going to be some sort of neighboring um, colony or neighboring uh, you know country or something where maybe they have someone that has like weird powers and there's some kind of conflict. I haven't seen Frozen since I thought since I saw it in theaters. Oh God. Okay, video's over. Video is over. Whew. All right, friends. I've been sitting here for about three hours now, but I'm sure you guys have just been sitting here for about 20 minutes or so. Hopefully I got to your question, and more likely if I didn't, I'm very sorry. I tried my best to do as many as I could. All in all, thank you guys for your questions. They were so much fun. I wasn't quite sure whether the Disney topic would have enough questions to talk about, but turns out there's like thousands of them. So thank you guys so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for a bit, and I will see you in the next Disney Month video.